I heard you talking about trouble in Banuke lands. <sighs> Was that out loud? Ears must be getting worn down from all those long leg blasts. But you heard right. I'm fresh back from the cut, looking for better scavenging and better shards. I guess you didn't find them up there? <laughs> Not with the Banuke wailing about new machines and talking spirits and their purses frozen shut. What's a trade route without trade? It's just a route. There's a trade route? I thought the Banuk kept to themselves. Uh, we Osiram and the Banuk are neighbors, after all. What's a few mountain ranges between friends? I have some acquaintances out there, still trying to dig a living out of the ice, but... They say nothing seems to stick. All the superstitious nonsense and rampaging machines aren't helping. What were these new machines and spirits? Honestly, I don't even know. Going by the number of Banuk funerals, I'd say the kind you turn away from. Not really my style. Well, if you reach my grand old age, you might prefer picking up after hunters in the Sundom. It's warmer, too. What is this place, the Cut? When the Karja took up swords and hacked away at the edge of Banuk land, they left the Cut behind. So a battleground from the war. Like the valley outside the Sacred Land. Mm-hmm. Mountain Pass in the far north and east will get you there. It's open to outlanders, hardy ones, like you. Just don't expect much of a welcome. Especially not now. New machines and talking spirits? I'm interested. Thought as much, just looking at you. Don't say you weren't warned. There's a slip of a trail through the northeastern mountains, past what we call the Grave Horde. You won't miss it. You'll find what passes for a town on the other side. Maybe someone there can talk you out of it. Maybe. Maybe not. Thanks for the information. What are you doing, Aloy? This path leads to the cut. The Banuk have nothing to offer besides useless mysticism. The Eclipse won't stand idle while you waste time playing in the snow. Return to your desk. Surprised you're still checking up on me. I thought you had moved on. Well, forgive me for still being concerned with the fate of the world. I was thinking. Banuk shamans thread blue cables through their skin, right? Kind of like someone else we know, huh? So maybe the real reason you want me to stay clear of the Banuk is to stay clear of your past. It's not the past that concerns me, Eloy. It's the future, or possible lack thereof. Which is why you should stop <clears throat> prattling and get back to what matters. But as usual, you do as you wish. Hmm, touchy. Welcome, I guess. Be warm enough up here, Nora. I've worked up a sweat from the climb. You made it to the cut, Outlander. Not that you'll stay long. Smoke rising from the mountain, and the village too. What's it for? Get ready for a rare sight, Nora. Burgrind, purveyor of necessities. Most of the time, the Banuk burned their dead, but not today. Because the bodies couldn't be recovered. Aye, a nasty business. All their best warriors lost. So they're getting a different kind of send off.
Grasp your grief, my hunters, and kill it! For our kin sees the fate all Banuk long for. Falling with their spears striking steel. Their struggle is over now. You have witnessed their spirits rise up into the blue sky and beyond to the blue light. But our struggle is only beginning. Soon, we will again take up the hunt against the daemon that frenzies the machines against us. And so I ask you, can you summon the courage of our fallen kin? Will you fight and die as well as they did? My courage, my spear. Our blood is in your teeth, Oratok. We are Banuk. Our enemies are prey. The daemon. That frenzies the machines. Machines that wiped out their best. And what do they want to do? Go back up there. Fools. A little advice. Uh, for free. Uh... Aloy. Aloy. I've been up here for two long winters, and I still can't make sense of the Banuk. Take this ruckus. It started with one of their shamans, uh, Orea, spouting on about spirits and demons up on Thunder's drum. So they march their Warwick up there, and half of them get slaughtered by machines. When Orea vanished, I thought the crazy might have gone with her, but no. He is Big Aritok, gearing them up to do it all over again. What is it about the Banuk you can't make sense of? Mm. Well, everything's a test to them. A hardship to endure. A challenge to survive. Seems like they don't have much of a choice in a place like this. Yeah. A land cold enough to crack teeth, filled with wild animals. You'd think they'd accept a little reasonably priced aid. Well, believe me, I've tried to convince them. But a Banuk with nothing left to prove might just lie down and die. And Orea is the one who spoke about this daemon? That's right. Told Aratok and the others that it lives up on Thunder's drum. And they believed him. But you don't. <laughs> Look, I don't know what Orea found up there. A shaman's not gonna talk to an outlander. The machines in the cut are getting more vicious, that's a fact. It could be because of the daemon. Or it could be because they all got indigestion, for all I know. But Araya's not around to explain. She took off, and no one knows why. Have you ever heard of a man named Silence? Tall, deadly serious, cables in his skin? Like a shaman? Uh, I've heard that name once or twice, but always whispered. Like some boogeyman the Banuk want to forget. I'm not sure what went down, but I got the impression he messed with the Conclave. Or they messed with him. Conclave? All the most important shamans gather in Banur from time to time to keep up with the latest mumbo-jumbo. No idea how they all fit into one tent without those crazy headdresses getting locked up on each other. Araya's been to that shindig, but when I asked her what it's like, she just gave me a dirty look. So if you want to know more, you'll have to find her and make her like you, I guess. <laughs> Good luck. Is Aratok a renowned warrior around here? He's a Warwick chieftain. His voice carries a lot of respect. Not that you hear much of it. Man talks about as much as a dead fish. But when he and Araya came to town with their Warwick, it drew more Banuk to this little bird than I'd ever seen. You know what else I saw, Aloy? My own little trade boot, stretching all the way back to the claim. Then, he goes and leads them off to their death at the claws of angry machines. Uh, so much for my best customers. What are these Warricks about, Burgrind? Some sort of tribe within the tribe? Eh, not like our clans back home. You don't get born into these things. They hold tryouts. Prove your best at something and you might get a place. Some Warricks come and go. Some last as long as metal. The whole Banuk territory, Banur, is just a bunch of the biggest, oldest Warricks. 
I'm not sure if I'm less confused or more confused. <laughs> well, here's the sure thing. Each Warwick has a chieftain and a shop. They make the decisions. All well and good, except the chieftains are hard-headed, and the shamans have their heads in the clouds. I want to know more about this daemon. Mm -mm. It's crazy talk, Aloy. Or there's something to it. Something connected to how the machines behave. Then you need to find Aurea. She was last seen headed for the mountains they call the Ice Rests. <sighs> I've heard only the shamans know the trail beyond those frozen peaks. Mm. But I do know where you could find her apprentice, Naltuk. He went north of the river, chasing rumors. Rumors? Not the good kind. Sudden attacks in the snow. Strange new structures. Some say a new machine, like no one's seen before. You said you've lived out here for two winters? Aye. Back home, some fur traders told me about this steel-forsaken heap of tents. Good location. Ripe for change. We were barely scraping by until this place started filling up for Araya. A great prophet is coming, they said. Oh, I heard prophet. Honest mistake. Not that the Banook are stingy, they just prefer to keep trade among themselves. We could get through to enough of them. We could really put this place on the map. Or at least on a map. We? Me and my daughter. Mm, my assistant, Varja. My assistant and my daughter. We seem to get along better as business partners. Her mother wanted me to show her a trade. She started tinkering with weapons. I say, when you need a break from this Banuke carry-on, stop in and see her. You're both, uh, hmm, how do I put it, uh... Women? No, 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 I independent. Look for her at Long Notch, the easternmost Banuke camp. See you around, Burgrund. Hope so. I like returning customers. I heard you mention a flood? Yes. A sudden deluge, without rain or melt to explain it. I'm Lao Lai, the drummer of Deep Din. Or at least I was, until it disappeared under the waters. Deep Din? What's that? A hollow, carved out by the old ones. A chamber, a basin, and a musical instrument all at once. My life, my calling. I'd explain it by playing for you if I could. But its pipes are deep under the water now. So Deep Din is a place. And a musical instrument? Yes. Pipes that carry a perfect tone beneath a sonorous basin. A wondrous edifice the old ones used to carry music far and wide. During the war, my father played the pipes to rally the Banuk against the Karja. I'm the drummer now. But our battles are few and far between. Mostly I play for the joy of it. Or to remember my family. Of course, if the waters don't recede, what's the point of joy? Or remembering? So the waters came fast. One day it was dry. The next, the nearby river had risen and the entire basin was flooded. I don't understand it. There was no rain, not even any clouds, and yet the river rose higher than I'd ever seen it. And there it remains. A flood without rain. That is strange. Where is this place? I'll have a look if I'm in the area. Just northwest of here. Look all you like, but I don't see what good it'll do. The floodwaters aren't going anywhere. How does one ask a river to relent? I do not want to hear this talk from you again. Doubt is heavier than a week's snow. Forgive me, my chieftain. We will be ready for the next attempt. But this will not be an attempt. It must be done. Do you understand? My chieftain. Good. Outlander, I suppose you wish to speak. This daemon you talked about. If you are hardy enough, you can venture out and see the signs yourself. It has changed the machines, made them fiercer, stronger. But what is it? A matter for the shamans to debate. Aurea knows about this daemon. Where would I talk to her? She does a shaman's work. That is not for the eyes and ears of others. Certainly not an Outlander's. There are other Weraks in Song's Edge, too? Yes. The village has its own life, for all Banuku need trade or shelter. 
After the war ended, it sprang up from what was once a campsite, quick as the bloom between frosts. Perhaps it will last, until the Karja seek war again. Did your Warwick come from this place? No, he rallied most of our hunters from across Banyur to face the threat of the demon. But I was born here, and stayed to fight the Karja when others retreated into the mountains. A few of my old warriors remain with me, those who survived. You're set on going back to the mountain? I have put my word to it. Even with the risks being so great? The risk of what? Death? It would be a worse fate to bow our heads to the challenge and say too much. Well, I guess that's it then. Good. I prefer deeds to words. Right. That weapon of yours, Outlander, that spear, I can see the blue light upon it. This? It was made by an acquaintance of mine. Ah, a shaman. Uh, no. More of a tinker? A tinker does not understand the spark in the metal, the song in the metal like this. But it could be improved upon, modified with the help of the old ones. Far north of here, there is a cave, a, a shaft in the snow. Within it is a nest of metal birds. Find a bird that hasn't been stripped by shaman's past. Look for a rail inside it, the length of your spear. That's all I can tell you. Get a rail from some metal birds in a cave. Sounds perfectly normal. Naltuk? Who are you? How did you find me? Burgrind told me you'd be out here. He's persistent. I've told that Asaram a thousand times. I don't need to buy anything. And I'm not selling. I just need to find Rhea. Well, you won't. She's gone where only shamans can tread. She seeks guidance from the voice in the blue light. That is her task. And the task she gave me is to observe the daemon's work. To stop it spreading, if I can. But what can I do about these towers? In only a few weeks, they've sprouted throughout the cut. The daemon's energy pulses from them. Rallies the machines, even repairs them. Aratok said this daemon was... frenzying machines? Look there. Those with the purple markings. They belong to the daemon. They're stronger, more dangerous. I've seen something like this before. A corruption. But it wasn't from your daemon. You have? Well, then you know more than I do. These towers, were they part of your corruption? Those are new to me, too. Like I said, they empower the daemon's machines. They must be stopped. Will you tell me where Aurea went? You ask a lot of questions. Only when I'm not getting the answers I need. There's but one voice Aurea wants to hear right now, and it isn't yours. I'm sorry. All right, you want to stop the spread of the daemon's work? I know how to get started, with my bow and spear. Outlander, wait. Won't you tell me your name? Aloy. Good. If you fall to the daemon's machines, at least I can properly recount your efforts to Araya. Thanks for the vote of confidence. But I won't fall. And when I'm done, you're gonna tell me where she is. <laughs> Seems I can take care of the machines and towers. The daemon's next. You claimed its power for yourself somehow. Perhaps Aurea should meet you after all. But what she truly seeks is hope. After what I just saw, you could show her that. She's in retreat beyond those mountains, the ice rasps. You'll have to walk the shaman's path to get there. You'll know you've reached the end when you come to a shrine. A great machine covered in blue gleam. 
Shamans who complete the path take a piece of it as reward. If you make it that far, you should too. You'll have earned it. You said something about Blue Gleam at the end of the Shaman's Path? A crystal that builds on the bodies of machines in the oldest ice. We Banuk believe it's the stuff of the blue light, frozen as it escapes their shells. But you might be more interested that merchants will trade well for it. Ergrin told me you're Araya's apprentice. In her absence, I serve the chieftain and his Werak as an advisor, a scout, a speaker for the blue light. A lot of responsibilities. I don't know if I can live up to Araya's example, but I have to try. I owe her that much. She took a chance on me, an aspiring shaman from the edge of the world. No one else would. Were you with Araya when they attacked the mountain? I wish I had been, even with all that happened. I'm no warrior, though, so she bid me wait. When Aurea and the Chieftain returned, I saw them argue bitterly. I don't know what about exactly. Then she came to me, gave me my task, and left us. How do I cross this shaman's path? Go to the Ice Rasps. Then follow the markers through the ice caves and the waterfalls, and make the climb to the shrine. But be careful. The path is meant to be an ordeal, the final trial of a young shaman's training. And I'll find Aurea at the end of it? No. She goes further up. Somewhere inside the mountain. If you see her, would you tell her... I have faith she will hear the voice again. Looks like a control center. What happened in here to start the water flowing? Intake tower malfunction. Drainage system offline. That's probably not good news. Looks like most of the facility is underwater. Are you alright? <laughs> Don't know how happy you just made me. <laughs> For a moment, I thought my fire was snuffed. The forge gone cold. But nope, nope. Not old Gildan. You're welcome. Uh, wait. Start from the beginning. What are you doing down here? Ow! My apologies. <laughs> When you mostly talk to yourself, you can tell your stories in whatever order you like. There's an artifact in that storage room I simply must acquire. But as you may have noticed, the door won't budge. I took one of those roundish, ringy what's-its from the wall beside the door. No luck. So I had to go at that panel with the button. Even less luck. My gentle experimentation caused the chamber to... flood. So I push the button again, perhaps a little too enthusiastically. Sparks and smoke. <laughs> now, obviously, I came here to investigate. My cautious footsteps may have contributed slightly to the collapse of a bridge. And when the bridge began to collapse, I may have, for the sake of expedience, abandoned the cumbersome ringy what's it to the waves. By the time I thought to give up the endeavor, the door had closed behind me. And thusly do we come to the present moment. You said something about an artifact? Indeed. That storage room is brimming with treasures from the old ones. But one in particular caught my eye. An intricate looking glass. I've only seen one such device before. My old mom brought one back for me from, from wherever she'd gone to that time. I remember holding it, staring into its face. Seeing myself and my mother just over my shoulder, smiling. And one of these looking glasses. It's in the storage room. Oh, yes. I'm quite sure. I peered into that dim little chamber and there it was. I've wanted to find one for so long, I... Yes, this time I'm sure I have. Well, there's no way we're getting into that storage room without another ring. It's part of the locking mechanism that controls the door. You don't say. Well, that's fantastic news. 
Marvelous, even. You've got two hands. I've got two hands. Perfect. <laughs> my savior, my salvation. And if you like, why wouldn't you? Of course you will. My accomplice. <laughs> Together, that ring is as good as ours. And with it, the storage room and its spoils. Didn't you say you dropped the ring in the water? Well, I'll grant you that adds a heretofore undiscussed level of complexity to the proceedings. So you found the button that controls the flow of water. Quite by accident. And then you broke that button. Also, quite by accident. The panel's the only way to shut this place down, as far as I can tell. This isn't gonna be easy. That storage room is filled, top to bottom. Would you be surprised to find the parts you need in there? I certainly wouldn't be. So, we need to replace that ring and get into the storage room. Then I can fix the panel and shut this place down. And I can finally wrap my fingers around that looking glass. Okay, Gildan. How are we gonna get that ring? Two sets of hands, girl! Two sets of hands! Behind us lie a pair of enormous gates, but I believe the gates must be operated in tandem. Together, we can dry this place out. Guess we better get started then. I guess we better. A little more now, and I should be able to get the blasted gate moving. There. You should be able to lower the gate. Huh? Right you are. Now, when I get this gate down, you'll need to turn the valve again. On a lock this thing in place. One gate down. Halfway through then, aren't we? To the second gate! Ah, it's okay. Like, how do we want to start this farewell thingy? Hmm. We might be the last actual people to ever see this place. Uh, yeah. Hence, you know, songs. Ready? One, two, three, four! Caught sellouts and runaway cowards! Oh, we see! Cut it, cut it. I forgot the words. Yeah. Shells, we started off so strong and then it all just imploded. Well, that's sort of my M.O. No, no, no heavy stuff. We're switching gears. Band name, we need one. See, check this out. We could just bang on this pipe, you know? And... Could we sample that or? Totally, like what about after the, oh, sorry. Just a sec. Laura? I, uh, I need to take a break. Laura? Hey! Laura! The drop is too far, Going down. Got it. We're good to go. You were a sight to see. Bounding from metal rust trap to metal rust trap. Still a bit of water, but low enough, wouldn't you say? Damn it. And here's that ring. Good question. Well, at least I should be able to swim, man. Snap off! It's a snap off! Very, very big snap off! I see it, Gildan. Very big, very, very big! Just stay out of the way. Roots can be a bit circuitous, but never mind. To the storage room, to the spoils. <laughs> I can't believe that worked. I thought you'd lost your mind tickling the empty air like that. Everything okay? I was so sure I saw it. The looking glass. I, 
was so sure. Right there in the window. I would... Of course. Trick of the light. Nothing at all. I'm sorry, Gildan. It must have meant a lot to you. Oh, well. Much as any artifact of the old ones would mean to me, really. It's fine. Uh, I'm fine. Besides, what are the spoils compared to the Delve? That's why we do it, girl. <laughs> the Delve, not the treasure. <laughs> and what a Delve it was! Ugh! By the Great Blazing Forge, I'll never forget that. Now then, I uh, believe we have some repairs to make. It's a whole lot prettier, isn't it? <laughs> what does it mean? It means it worked. By the forge! <laughs> you are a wonder! Do you hear that often? I'll hazard a guess you do. I've heard something like that once or twice. Oh, she's modest now. A master of the arts of the old ones, a delver to shame the entire claim, and she wants to be modest. It's not like I did it alone, Gildan. No. No, I suppose not. So what's next for you? On your way back to the claim? And deprive the people of Song's Edge the story of this encounter? Perish the thought! <laughs> I'll stay there a while longer. But a story is best told by all who encountered it. Come and lend a hand, won't you? I don't know what you did, but the water drained in the snap of a short song. What do you think of the music? I've never heard anything else like it. That's because there's no other place with such resonance, such intonation that rattles your ribs with its power. And of course, no one else knows these pipes like I do. I learned them by ear before I could walk, strapped to my father's back. Thank you for draining the waters, not just for myself but for my ancestors and their songs. Please, take this as a token of our gratitude. Down. 
I just spent 16 hours in here, trying to install upgrades to improve efficiency for the central processing unit. Project Firebreak is going to need the brain power. Let's just hope I'll have enough of my own. Anita stayed with me the whole time. We got a lot done, but every time she brushed by and I smelled her hair... Oh boy, I should just go to bed. This is Director of Security Blevins resending the emergency supply order. Try reading it this time, okay? You sh weasels don't want me calling my people in SLC. Director of Security Blevins is writing us like a petty tyrant. I can't even sneeze without triggering his control issues. Someone hacked the menu board to display obscene messages about our colleague, Mr. Blevins. Is this the most advanced geological project ever undertaken, or a junior high locker room? Come on, people. I ask again, as I've asked a thousand times. Speak to me. What more would you have me do? Is there no prayer that will reach you? No mark that will break your bonds? Ah. I can't help you if you won't speak! Whisper is all I ask. To guide me. How? How did you get here? The way was sealed by the spirit herself. I... I used one of these. I could show you. Yes, show me. Please. Recovered. Exploit successful. Restraints evaded. Is someone there? Ik Orea? Orea, I need you. Uh, to no, I will not submit. Orea, the daemon is forcing you. Orea, Transmission terminated. You heard it. The voice of the spirit calling to me from the heights of Thunder's drum. She was able to throw off the bonds of the daemon for a moment. Because of what you did. Who are you? And what do you want? I'm Aloy. Naltuk sent me. He thought that you could use my help. He was not mistaken. You've been a... Revelation. Now I know for certain that the spirit endures. Perhaps together we can find a way to set her free. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. I came all this way for answers, and so far, I haven't heard any. It seems to me that you are the answer. But of course, I'll tell you all I can. Ergren said you might know something about a man named Silence. That you may have had dealings with him at the Conclave? When that name is spoken, secrets soon follow. Or vanish, as the case may be. Why do you want to know? He's... done some terrible things. But he's also helped me when no one else could. I don't know as much about him as I'd like to. I would imagine his aid is very powerful. But it will not come without cost. Unfortunately, I am sworn to an oath of secrecy by the Conclave on this matter. I get that. But you and I are trying to help each other, right? Yes. But I would be breaking an oath, and that... I cannot do. You seem to have a history with this voice, this... spirit. She saved my life. Here, years ago, during the war with the Karja. A raid scattered my Warak. I was cut off, alone. I lured the enemy into the Rhyme Drifts, hoping to lose them in the mist, but they endured, so... I took refuge in this cave. 
That's when I heard her voice. Wanderer. Lost, like me. A spirit of the blue light gets sundered from it. She asked me for aid. She chose me. But I was in no position to help, not with the Karja after me. So she helped me first. By closing a door on the mountain below, one you must have opened to get here. Locked by means similar to those found in this room. It kept the Karja from reaching me. Safe from them. I was able to do as she asked. What did the spirit want from you? She said she was... hurt. Incomplete. She needed bones. Parts not unlike what you'd find in a machine. They were here. In this room. She wanted me to bring them to Thunder's Drum. So I did, and she showed me how to heal her. So began our communion. You had a communion with the spirit? Yes. Inside Thunder's Drum is a room like this one, only larger, with an altar. I went there many times to speak with her. What did she say? She told me she was lost and needed my help. She asked questions about our lands, our tribe, and she listened with patience, with wisdom. I told her things long kept silent about my family, my dreams, my fears. She never tired of me, never judged. We kept each other's company. Aurea, what do you think the spirit is? I see. You are not Banuk, and our songs are not familiar to you. You do not know the blue light. That which struggles to survive in our hearts and animates the machines. The essence of life, and in its purest form. Harmony. As the anger of the machines grows, this light has faded from the world. And the spirits it sustains are stranded. That's what she is. A lost soul, cut off from what it needs. Lonely, forsaken. I must help her. We must. I'm not sure if I understand. But I want to. That's all I need. The daemon. What do you know about it? I spoke with the spirit many times. First here, then inside Thunder's Drum. The last time. She told me she was under attack by something that could not be seen by mortal eyes. Something evil. She named it the Daemon, and said it needed her power to do what it willed. And she begged me for help, to find a way to destroy her if necessary, to keep it from using her. That was five years ago. I didn't hear her voice again, until today. What kept you from the spirit, after it begged for help? I went to Artok, hoping he could protect her. But the war with the Karja still raged, and before I could reach him, I was ambushed by the Mad Sun King's Kestrels and taken to Meridian in chains. I wasn't able to return to Thunder's Drum until long after the liberation, not until last thaw. You said you returned to Thunder's Drum. That was the expedition that went bad. I saw the funeral. <laughs> yes. Once there was finally peace with the Karja, Aratak and I gathered a warrock of great hunters to defeat the Daemon. And yet, the old door to Thunder's Drum was gone, replaced by a gate we could not pass, and many machines. We were crushed. Aratok called a retreat, but we had already lost our best. We abandoned them to the snow as we fell back. After. You and I could not agree on what to do next. So I came here, hoping against hope to hear the spirit again. And because of you, I did. Let's see if I've got this straight. We heard two voices. One you call the spirit, captured somehow by the one you call a daemon. Whatever this daemon is, it's related to the machines and why they've become more dangerous. I want to know how. Both the spirit and the daemon are on a mountain, Thunder's Drum. So why don't we go there and figure out what it all means? We can't. Thunder's Drum is dangerous, more than you can imagine. The daemon has secured it. Besides, Aratak won't let us go. 
As chieftain, he controls the pass to the mountain. And he can't be reasoned with. Sounds like you need a new chieftain. Ha! Huh. There's an idea that's certain to win us friends. Huh. You said you were a hunter. And I'll wager you're not an ordinary one. It's not impossible. Even for an outlander. An Aratok couldn't refuse the challenge if you were known among the Werak. <laughs> Wait, uh... Me? Challenge Aratok? I don't want to be chieftain of anything, much less a bunch of Banuk that don't want me. But you want to go to Thunder's Drum, don't you? You heard the spirit. She is suffering, tormented by the daemon. She longs to be free. And perhaps, when released from her bonds, she can give you the answers you seek. I can't believe I'm agreeing to this. Fine. What do I have to do? Get the Wirak's attention to show the worth of your claim. Win at the hunting grounds. Kill bandits the prey on the cut. Or speak to my friend Sekuli. You help her. You'll definitely get noticed. Is there a tall neck in the area? Yes, near the frost figures. But it's been frozen in ice for generations. What does that have to do with anything? It'll help. Trust me. Maybe even more than I thought. <sighs> if you say so. Do all you can. When the time comes for you to throw your spear at Aratok's feet, I will be there to back your claim. Until then, I'll be here to answer any questions you have about the challenge. Oh, and one more thing. In the box over there is a weapon, like my own. Take it. You may find it useful. What are your hunters doing so far out here? We are of the White Teeth, come down from the jawbone of Banur to test those who would run with us. The test? In those hunting grounds? No, it is an ordeal. Survive upon the glacier in the knife trail, as our ancestors did. It's been a harsh season. Two have yet to return. We shall wait. Then we shall bless their attempt. Then we shall leave. What does this ordeal involve? To scale the glacier's face and endure four days and four nights, sustained only from the frozen ground of the machines. Our shaman has blessed the ordeal and permitted their harvest. Metal to fashion weapons. The rest is forbidden. What about the two who haven't returned? It was their ordeal to face alone. Their life or death. Those who return know the white teeth run alongside them. Those who do not know the white teeth mark their attempt. How generous. You're from Banur. Do you know about Aratok and Area? Strong names indeed. They have many songs. But there is a reason they roam out here, in the cut and not among the great war acts. This obsession with Thunder's Drum will be their undoing. So who are the White Teeth? Warriors. The first and the best. All young hunters hungry for the fight seek to run with us. Now the machines are angered. There was always fighting. We are well served, eh, Shaman? Every day lightning cracks in the smoke of battle. Every night a new name to honor in song. Aren't you even going to look for your missing hunters? In time. As months pass, the meltwater often carries the bodies out. Unbelievable. If there's a chance they're alive, then I'll look for them. Even if they did still live, they will not accept your aid, Outlander. To us, survival is sacred. Nothing else can be relied upon. We'll see. Keeper, Aurea said that I should compete in the trials here. Aurea did? She's never sent someone before. And what is your reason for training? I would ask this of any Banuk who attempted the trials. I'm going to challenge Aratok to become chieftain of his Warak. <laughs> well, you better get started then. You look like you've got some stories to tell. <laughs> oh, I outlived most of my stories. I ran with the Thunder's daughters long ago before they ran their course. For a time, we shook the snow off the men of Benor. I couldn't last. Some fell in glorious battle. Some were exiled in infamy. Still glorious, if you ask me. Others had a worse fate. What's worse? To grow old. And find that all the rules and traditions you fought so hard against are still there. 
That's why I tell all the hunters I train to stay young. I'm guessing you're not part of the Hunter's Lodge. Every tribe claims they were the first to have hunting grounds. And every tribe claims the Karja stole it from them. So who was the first? We were. And the Karja stole it from you. That's right. How do the trials work around here? There's no Karja medals. I had some, but I used them to patch up holes in my snow boots. Instead, you'll compete against the best times set by other Banuk hunters. To take second place, even third place, puts you among names of legend. What if I come in first? We'll see. Machines will be released into the arenas in waves. Pace yourself. Strategize. Only then will you be able to defeat them all without being overwhelmed. First run on that trial, and you claimed second place. I haven't seen many pull that off. No more trials. Not yet. You can always come back. I think I found one of the hunters. Outlander, huh? Well, who else would join me on this path I've taken? Which path would that be? Away from tradition. Away from the Werak. It's not so... Damn. I'm metal too. But my need is greater. Nuke don't accept help. Is it true? <laughs> they don't. I do. You fight well. I am a Cree. Thank you. I'm Aloy. I heard the White Teeth were missing two hunters. You look like you could leave if you wanted to, so... I stayed because of the other. My Len. She snapped her leg descending the ice. I bided my time keeping vigil, but now she must return to the Werak before they leave. Is joining the White Teeth so important to you? It's one of the great Weraks of Banor. Not so many great ones left now. I would go where my Len went. I was her shadow on the snow, and she was mine. To be a runner with the white teeth was everything to her. You know this, Mylan, well. Since our knees were always skinned. All my life. In a test to prove that we only need ourselves. That was my weakness. Sounds like she was lucky for your weakness. That's not the way she sees it. Mylan won't let you help her, will she? Because of the rules of this test. You're quick as a rock fall. No, just used to being told what's forbidden to me. She won't allow it. Won't take the medicinal plants I found or the food. Only what she can scrape up on hands and knees. I could get close when she was delirious. But now she's learned not to let me get close. What's this ordeal supposed to prove? That we have the strength of our ancestors. That we can survive as they did. When they came in search of a homeland, some were trapped against this glacier by a snowstorm. Four days, four nights. After the storm cleared, the survivors sighted a Tolnek, 
which led them up into Banor. Well, that's the story I learned anyway. So let's get her back to the work. All right. I've made a splint for her leg. Medicine for the pain, but I should warn you, she won't take them willingly. The law of survival... Tribal law shouldn't keep us apart from the ones we care for. Even if she cares more for the law. There. She's passed out again. Between us, we can fight the machines off before they reach her. Uh, another tradition broken. Take it from me. It gets easier the more you do it. We did it. I can feel her fever even in this cold. She shouldn't have been putting weight on this leg. She is awake. This Outlander. You bored her here, Ikri? You think I went to the Nora homelands to find a spear to drive between us? I told you. The ordeal is mine. And mine alone. I will survive! Which would you rather keep, my Len? Your leg or your pride? Because I think you're gonna have to choose. Finish it. I know what you think of me. But I vowed you'd join the White Teeth. And you will. I will go back. <clears throat> Alone. <clears throat> no! Let me do this. Please. Letter. My Len, I hope you can forgive me someday. I never accepted your help. It's the where act you should ask for forgiveness. I didn't care about the where act. She'll understand. You saved her life. You don't know the Benuk very well, Aloy. We have so many ways to express a grudge, and only one to accept an apology. I have to go my own way. I don't belong with them, who left her to die. And I don't belong with Ikri. I'll find a crack in this glacier, and I'll shout my grief into it. And the ice can keep it forever. What should I tell them? The work that I fell. And that she endured. Will you? My Len has returned. I expect you have something to say about this. I do. Then convince me what an Outlander's word is worth. If this was a test of her endurance, I'd say she's endured more than many could bear. She put your Werak above all else. That was what kept her going, through the pain. And through the loss of a friend. She survived for you. Don't turn her away. She is a fine teller. There is a place for my land with the white teeth. I do not dispute it. Outlander. So nothing of the other hunter? 
The one called Ikree? She's... gone. She sounded brave. Her name... will always be in my song. Hush, hush. A shaman's secrets are not spoken aloud. Is this what you wanted me to find? Bind it to your spear. Use it to attach... this for now. You'll find more, I'm sure. Why are you helping me? The blue light is fading. The machine songs are ending. And, and what does the conclave do? They sit, they chant, they observe. No more. We must fight for it. And you? You are a fighter. We share a cause. I'm not sure we do. I'm not even sure what the cause is. But I'm grateful. No need for thanks. Only action. Please, no I should wake you up. Easy. Right, it's never easy. to its head. People have been telling tales of your accomplishments. Seems you have taken a special interest in our stretch of snow, Outlander. Yes. And apparently this is the only way I'll get to see all of it. Is this a challenge? The Warrack. You? <laughs> this must be a joke. It is not a joke, Eratok. The Outlander's your pawn. And with you backing her claim, I have no choice but to accept. I expected better of you, sister. It was you who forbid me from Thunder's drum, brother. Brother and sister? This is a little more complicated than I thought. No, it's simple. You will meet me at the Frost Figures. And I'll put a quick end to this mockery. I suppose I owe you an explanation. Yeah. I suppose you do. So why didn't you tell me that you and Aratok are siblings? I thought I wouldn't have to. I'm surprised Aratok brought it up in front of a stranger. He must be very angry. Not always the best judge of people. I prefer the company of spirits. They're simply my own. I didn't want you to think of our pilgrimage as some sort of family squabble. It's much more important than that. It's bold, I'll give you that. Going after your own brother. He gave me no choice. He thinks I'm a child to be shoved to the back of the hunt. He would forbid me from my destiny. And yet, part of me did it knowing he would forgive me, eventually. He always does. Family drama aside, what's this challenge meant to be anyway? You and Aratok will hunt machines at the Frost Figures. The victor will be the fastest. It won't be easy. Nothing about this has been so far. When you meet us at the starting point, I'll tell you more. It will be simpler to explain from the base of the hills. Araya, it's not about who's related to who. 
I want to know what's inside Thunder's drum. The spirit, the daemon, and how it all connects to the machines. But if we're gonna go through with this, I need you to be straight with me. I... underestimated you. And our tuck. I won't make that mistake again. See you at the Frost figures, then. What can I do for you, Burgrind? Mourn my poor departed luck. I finally met some Banuke keen to trade with Outlanders. Then, they up and vanished. Three Banuke hunters rolled in a few days ago. No provisions, junk equipment, no idea how to strip a machine for parts. Asked me to outfit them for a long trip. And you know me, Aloy. I'm sentimental. So, I did it on credit. And they haven't paid. Well, they tried. Just look what they did to this Thunderjaw heart. But that was ages ago. And I'm starting to worry about them. Are you worried about their well-being or your purse strings? A man can worry about two things. Uh-huh. What kind of deal was this really? Just what I said. I was nothing but generous, Aloy. After they dropped this ruined heart at my feet, I even gave them another chance. Sent them to fetch a few other parts I need. But you haven't seen them since. <laughs> Hide nor hair. What do you mean they couldn't harvest parts? Not uncommon with Banuk. That's shaman's work, you see. The hunters take down the machines. The shamans slice them up. No shaman with these three. Just two youngsters sniping at each other. And that big fella standing there smiling. So if the Banuk don't usually hunt without a shaman, what's the story with these three? Mm, they weren't telling, but hammer to steel is not a happy story, whatever it is. You said they asked you to outfit them for a trip. A trip to where? Not sure, but I heard them chattering about the Sundom when they thought I wasn't listening. So they're leaving Banuk territory. Sensible behavior. Still, I get the sense this wasn't a sightseeing trip. They're running from something. I'm not a debt collector, Burgrind. If I look for them, it'll be to make sure they're all right. Of course, of course. Fires of the Forge, forgive me. I actually like these idiots. The molten steel of youth and all that. But uh, if you do manage to find them, you could remind them of the deal we made. <laughs> a Scorcher Claw, a loop of sinew from a Stalker, and a Snap Morphine. If they bring me those parts, their debt's paid. And then some. Just make sure they don't bust them up too badly. I'll... consider it. Last I saw them, they were heading northeast. Good machine hunting up that way. If you decide they're worth the trouble, you might look for them there. Something tells me those are Bergman's missing hunters. I don't suppose you three know an Osraman song's edge called Bergman, do you? <laughs> Boys! That con artist sent an errand girl to collect what's owed to him. I'm nobody's errand girl. Bergen asked me to help harvest parts. Or would you rather keep trying to sell him broken junk? Broken junk? This pack will be on the move soon. No time to argue. If she's offering to help, we should accept it. Fine. We're about to take down these machines. If you're so eager to help, then lead the way! You three are pretty handy in a fight. <laughs> Thanks, I guess. Not that we needed your help. We are doing just fine without you. That's not the way Bergren tells it. He says you tried to settle up with him using a shattered Thunderjaw heart. What? That's an exaggeration. It was only broken in two. Urkai, we don't have time for this. Come on, boys. Back to the hunt. We still need two more of Bergren's components. 
What's the rush? We want out of these lands as soon as possible. That's all you need to know. Why are you leaving the cut? Well, we could go back to Banor. Let Anakut slit our throats. By the blue light, Orkai. Why don't you just write our story in the snow for any passing hunter to read? <sighs> we... had a dispute with the chieftain of our old Werak. We thought someone else should have been in charge. He disagreed. It seemed like a good time to move on, so we are traveling to the Sundom. From here to the Sundom? It's a long trip. Seems worth it. Sometimes survival is about knowing when to leave and where to go. Yeah, and in this case, survival means us getting as far away as we can from Bonor. We've seen enough red snow. What's the plan once you get there? What will survival be about then? Look, all that matters is that we get there. And to do that, we need shards. So if you'll excuse us. So this Thunderjaw heart you brought Bergren. Let me ask you this, all right? Why would it matter that the heart was broken into two pieces? Can't you just stick it back together? Of course you can't just stick it back together. I just meant... Oh, I bet that scam artist Osirim could. He just wants to send us on another stupid errand. Oh, he's not so bad. I like Bergren. Like him? Tulamot, he sent us out in the snow to nearly die under the feet of a Thunderjaw, and- Boys, shut up! Ugh! Every time someone brings up that stupid heart. I've got the Scorcher Claw Bergren was asking for. That only leaves the Stalker Sinew and the Snap Mafang. You should hold on to it. You're coming along to the next hunt after all, aren't you? I suppose somebody's gotta keep you three out of trouble. Fine. I guess you'll have to tag along then. But don't start thinking you're one of us. The bloody snowdrifts aren't accepting new hunters. <laughs> bloody snowdrifts? That's what you want to call our Warwick? Yeah, it's not great to die. Oh, it's, it's not like your names are any better. You. We're headed northwest, to the ruins near Hollow Hall. Outlander. I have prevailed over such challenges before, and fear none. But this one is foolish. You are not Banuk. You do not understand my responsibilities. I ask you, one hunter to another, withdraw. Will you let us go to Thunderstrom? You haven't seen what's up there, Outlander. I will not risk my sister's life again. Then we better get on with this. So be it. I will bury your insolent claim in the frozen ground. Enough! Let us begin. To hunt, to strive. That is the way of the Banuk and of the contest before you. You will climb the frost figures from the east, Aratok from the west. Each trail wends its way through deadly machines. Hunters from the Werak will be posted along the way. They will hail you, calling out machines for you to slay. Your hunt will take you around the ridge to the center, where you must descend to the valley for your final kill. Each time, after your prey has fallen, you must launch a beacon such as this, so that all our kin will see your progress. Kill machines, launch balloons. Got it. So, the first of us to launch the third balloon wins? Well... Yes. But as Challenger, your path to victory is harder. If even one of your beacons comes in after Aratox, he prevails. <laughs> you had your chance, Outlander. So did you. The hunt begins on my mark. Wasting. I seem to be on the right path.
Power talk knows what he's doing. No time to waste. Almost down. Something's wrong. My kin should be here, driving in our final quarry. So it's true. Frostclaws from Thunder's Drum. The attack cut short the competition. Naturally, there can be no result. It is void. You saw what she did. She defeated the machines. Not I. It is proven, she is the better hunter. We are Banuk. Survive, prevail. What else matters? My blood is in your teeth. I take my place behind you on the hunt. No more hunters may make the ascent to Thunder's Drum. The way is closed to all but the Chieftain and myself. It is not my place, but I would ask a boon to accompany you and my sister. It might be permitted. But only if you do as I say. No. Only if you do as I say. Thunder's drum awaits. There's a camp at its base, Long Notch it's called. Meet us there when you're ready. Chieftain. Montana Recreations. Visitor centers a bust. I'm recording the strategic and operational value at roughly 0 point squat. No reason we shouldn't pack the staff onto a vert and send them back to nowhere's will as soon as the gates are locked. Enjoy basic income, ding-dongs. Oh, I... Yes. <laughs> Hello, I... Well, an outlander at the Shrine of Forgotten Beasts. Welcome. I'm Enjuk. Uh, Aloy. The shrine of what? When the old world still breathed, a great man built a tiny totem to this beast and stored the visage inside. When the totem is placed on the pedestal, the animal is painted onto the empty air, and the beast lives again. Well, almost. There are seven pedestals. Where are the other six figurines? I found this one in the wilds. Remembered the indentations in the pedestals here and saw how they matched the base of the totem. But as you say, it's one of seven, isn't it? Oh, the great Montana recreations must have made more, but 
time has scattered them. So these totems, the images they show are of animals that no longer exist. They're gone, like the old ones. Uh, so it seems. <sighs> to think such magnificent creatures are lost to us that never even knew they were here. We rely as much on beasts as we do on machines. For food, for warmth, but do we study them with the same fervor? Yeah, I do. For example, I have this theory about foxes. Why do foxes have red fur? <laughs> Think about what they eat. Meat? Raw meat. Bloody meat. See? Natural causation. Logical connections. It only makes sense. You've thought a lot more about foxes than I have. You said a great man made these figurines? Indeed. He was, I believe, a student of the natural world. Like me. But surpassing my abilities a thousand times over. The great Montana recreations. Perhaps the finest natural scholar the old world ever produced. His voice claims responsibility for the totems, the vessels for the knowledge he accumulated. I share his desire to understand the beasts, to catalog their behaviors and preserve their images. And I like to flatter myself that I'm an apprentice of sorts, carrying on his work. Someday, perhaps, if I am persistent, I can earn his name. Enjuk Recreations. I found some of those animal figurines you like. Cut may have forgotten you, little ones, but I will not. And now that you've returned to your pedestals, I can show others. I should get going. Of course, of course. I've taken up so much of your time already. But I don't suppose you could keep an eye out for more figurines? If I run across any, I'll bring them your way. Ursus Americanus. The magnificent American Black Bear. Brought to you by Montana Recreations. How would you like to find yourself cornered by that thing? I suspect I'd like it very much indeed. What a beautiful beast you were! Puma Concalor, the fearsome cougar. Brought to you by Montana Recreations. Ursus Arctos, the menacing grizzly bear, brought to you by Montana Recreations. Those claws look like they could rip someone in half. Perhaps in its youth, but you heard Montana Recreations. He said it's grizzled, old. Its hunting days are behind it. Otocolius Virginianus, the majestic mule deer. Brought to you by Montana Recreations. Not built like a predator, but perhaps it needed those horns to take down its prey in the absence of sharp fangs. Canis Lupus, the enigmatic gray wolf. Brought to you by Montana Recreations. Could it be that these wolves and our foxes are the same somehow? Perhaps after hundreds of winters. No. No, that's ridiculous. There's the herd. Everyone ready? <laughs> Are you joking? We were born ready. Let's go get them, flaming skulls. Nope. That's awful. It is a pretty bad name. Good effort to work, I. Forget it. Let's just go kill something. That's another part down. One more and you'll have what you need to pay off Burgund. Starting to feel real, you know. I'm starting to believe we're really gonna get out of here. Honestly, I wasn't sure we'd survive a week without Nikoni. But here we are. Who's Nikoni? Nikoni... Nikoni was... She was a friend of ours. She challenged the chieftain for control of our... of the Werak. She didn't make it. No. If you're gonna tell this story, tell it true. She was murdered. Is this why you left Benor? Because of this business with Nikoni and your chieftain? Onika knew Nikoni was our mentor, our friend. We couldn't stay. That final night, we snuck back to camp, packed what we could, and left. Like cowards. 
What are we to tie? We are Banuk, aren't we? Survive and prevail. That's what we do. It's not what she did. Nakoni challenged the chieftain. Why? Onikuk wrapped himself in power and authority the way some people wrap themselves in furs. If you were willing to fawn over him and sing false songs to him, you might get a spot on the best hunts. The Werax split into two. Those willing to lick the bottoms of Onikut's feet and the rest of us, waiting for things to get better. Until Nikoli. She was the best and bravest of us. She was the one who took a stand. What happened? How did you lose Nikoni? She challenged the chief into a hunting competition. Onikut, damn him! He wasn't nearly the hunter Nikoni was. But who comes back to the camp after the trial? Onikut, grinning like a snap maw, crowing, Oh, where's little Nikoni? We tracked Nukoni through the woods. Found her not far from the trailhead. Their damn neck snapped. I don't want to remember her like that. Sometimes that memory... It's all I can think of. I'm sorry, Tatai. It sounds like she meant a lot to you. To all of you. It's nice to be heard. Thank you, Aloy. Look, it doesn't matter, okay? What happened in Bonoer is buried in Bonoer. What matters now is what happens in the Sundom. That's where the burning turkeys are gonna make a name for ourselves, right? Oh, the burning turkeys? Seriously? It rolls off the tongue. Sort of like vomit? So, where to next? There's a lake just west of here. Seems like a good place to find a snap, Malfang. We'll meet you there. If you beat us there, just wait by the campfire. We'll be along. Everything all right? We took our time. After our last conversation, we had a lot to think about. I can imagine. Just one more hunt, then your debt is paid and you three can make your way south. Ready? Huntress, the sunshine snowshoes await your signal. <laughs> <laughs> Horrible. I'm almost impressed, Dulamok. Didn't think you could come up with a name worse than burning turkeys. Well, I liked it. Let's hunt. the last of Bergren's parts. Looks like you three are out of debt. For now. Until Orkai breaks something else. It was one time! You make a nice shaman, Aloy. Thanks for lending a hand. Maybe we'll meet you in the Sundom sometime. Once you get to the Sundom, what then? What's the next step? We hunt like Nikoni wanted to hunt. Nikoni had big dreams. A werak in which everyone pulls their weight and takes care of each other. No shamans, no chieftains. No need to pry the power out of anybody's hands. Sounds like a lot of work. Mm, but worth it, I think. And a fitting tribute to Nikoni. We can become the Werak she always wished for. You won't have me to strip your kills now. Are you three gonna be all right? Eh, doesn't look that hard, really. We'll be fine. <sighs> Great. He washes three successful harvests and he's suddenly a shaman. When you get to Song's Edge, talk to Bergrant. If he can't teach you himself, we'll know someone who can. Sure. And I bet he charges us for the introduction. Uh, thank you, Aloy. I'm sure we'll figure it out. I guess this is goodbye. How does it feel, putting the lands behind you? The only thing I would have missed is already gone. Let all those rotten Bonor suck-ups freeze to death. It's a little much, Urkai, don't you think? It's strange. What is it to be Banuk after Banur forsakes you? How do we decide who we are? How about you, Aloy? Who do you think we are? What will you remember of us? You lost someone you care about. That leaves a wound. The sort of wound a lot of people don't recover from. Yeah. I've got nothing but scars to show for it. That's the point. Only survivor scar. After everything you've been through, you keep going. We're the Scars of the North. Scars of the North. Sounds pretty tough, doesn't it? Thank you, Aloy. It's a good name. 
one will honor. Bergrind, how'd your investment pay out? Quite handsomely, thanks very much. You know those three crazy Banuka calling themselves the Scars of the North now? <laughs> well, now that I have those parts, I can pay off a debt of my own. So they've gone south then? Aye, that they have. I've got a friend in the Sundom by the name of Otur. He owes me a favor. Old Otur is a machine scavenger, a pretty competent one. So I sent them to learn from the best. Or at least from the pretty competent. Well, we work with the resources we have. Speaking of which, here, a token of my gratitude. Inner Tut. As we are bound by laws, you are bound by wire. Yet your crime was the act of killing. So we must drive you out. Away from the Werek. From protection. From our songs. My chieftain. Coppola. Am I not your favorite fighter? Do you not recognize me from this tooth you knocked out? How many times have I pulled you from danger by your neck? Made excuses for your behavior? You are my favorite! But the shaman is decided. While you wait for exile, think on what brought you here. A test of strength! Who among us would refuse a challenge from an outlander? Not I! But I did not kill him! Hush, hush. You can tell your story to the ice. <sighs> You took our tox mantle. It's mine now. I would like to see that fight. They said that you killed someone. Perhaps I did. If even my chieftain accepts it, it must be so. That's not the way it works for me. Want to tell me your story? I did fight with the Karja Hunter to settle a challenge. That much is true. He was strong, and damn quick. We traded punches. Good punches. Hard punches. And the next thing I remember... Gray, morning light, and the Karja beside me, with his head broken open. But the blow was not by my hand. Isn't your Werak supposed to support you? At least give you the benefit of the doubt? When our Werak had caused a quarrel, I was a solution. To fight for its honor and win, they'd call on me. Or, when they needed someone to lose, for appearances, I could do that too. Now an Outlander is murdered without honor, all eyes are on me. I have become my Wirak's shame. They don't want an incident with the Karja, so you take the fall. That is what I do best. So everyone knows you started the fight with this man? Of course! For honor, I'll fight anyone. If, if I wasn't bound, I'd fight to prove myself right now! I don't think that would help you. This is what I am. Each runner in the Werrick has a gift. I brawl. None can take a punch, a fall better than I can. Until this time, I was too drunk. We were grappling. He clapped my ears. I took one last swing as I went down, but not a killing blow. It can't have been. And for your punishments, they'll exile you from the Werrick? From warmth. March me up the slopes of the cloud shear. Leave me stripped and exposed. That's awful. If I survive, the land has absolved me. That's the law. It must be accepted. It's still awful. I'm not stupid. I don't like my chances either. I can't fight a mountain. I'll be honest. You haven't got a good defense, Inatut. I've heard that one before. Where did the fight happen? A clearing, just outside the Karja Outlander's camp. You should talk to them. They wouldn't hear me out. They say no one else could have been there, other than me and the dead man. The shaman consulted the signs in the snow and agreed. I'll see what I can find out. And I'll be back. I'll be here. What else am I gonna do? Until the horn gives a call for my exile. Huntress, what business do you have with us? I was asked to look into the murder of a Karja hunter. What happened? It's plain as day. A drunk Banuk thug picked a fight with Ruas, struck him down from behind and stole his headdress. The accused man says that he didn't do it. You're not going to get anything useful out of the Banuk, whether they talk to you or don't. 
They gather up like cloaks in a chill wind every time a hunter dies out here. Won't even hand Ruas's killer over for a proper trial. A proper trial? To fill his mouth with salt, and hold him up for the sun to consider over days. If it is Clement, it may only take his sight, or his wits. So other Karja hunters have died in these lands before? Three, maybe four in the last few seasons. That's no surprise. This place punishes even the prepared, and many young nobles don't prepare. But usually the snow covers everything, and the bodies are never found. No thanks to the Banuk. Do you think they're involved? No. If it's not about their tribe, they don't want to get involved. In these outlands, even the sun cannot thaw all it touches. Doesn't sound like you trust the Banuk much. They're not without their reasons to keep apart from us. Ten years of reasons. Oh, it's the war. The war is over. We made amends, but no. The land never forgets. Snow and ice keep memory, they say. It takes time for scars to heal. You think I don't know that? I still bear the lashes for refusing one of the Mad King's Sun Priests. I was your age then. Uh, times of shadow. Times of shadow. Where did you find Ruas's body? There's no hunt, girl. Nothing to pick up. Humor me. I'm a good tracker. Down the rise to the west, there's a clearing. But a grazer herd couldn't have trampled it better. And if that barbarian gives up Ruas's headdress before they cast him out, let me know. It's valuable. Someone's here! Not Banuk. Then she won't be missed! You've been killing Karja. And for what? Revenge for the war? Who gets to declare that one tribe no longer hates another? I'll tell you. Not the ones who fought. Not the ones whose songs are silenced. Like my kin. For what you did, another Banuk has been sentenced to certain death. What about his song? Oh, that's why you followed us. For that punch-drunk idiot in it. <laughs> Fate is sharp today. They've already let him out to face his exile. Let's see who the cold claims first. <laughs> The Nora girl? Is it really you, or has the bone chill got through my skull? I found the real killers. No one else has to die because of this. Take these. A dead Karsha's clothes. Haven't I been beaten down enough? But I won't argue. Where I thought I saw my ancestors. They said, we're surprised you ended up here. <laughs> Better hurry. <sighs> Machines. Your trial's over. It was other Banuk who killed that man. Killed him because he was Karja. You know why I took the first swing at him? He challenged the honor of the Banuk. The honor. That's what I thought. Come on. Let's get you back. Once I'm off the mountain, I'll find my own way. I need to think. Is that something I'm used to? Who knows what could happen? I'll see you at town then. You had better make it, all right? I give my pledge. Inita told you the truth. This is the headdress stolen from the murdered man. 
You'll find more in a ravine north and west of here, along with the bodies of the killers. The exile still served its purpose. He was guilty of our suspicion. Fate has fallen like snow, and should Inatut return, he will be absolved. You can't be serious. He speaks for the Werek, my Nora friend. You look ridiculous. If you would return to my Werek, you will behave as a Banuk does. How does a Banuk behave, my chieftain? Like I did? Accepting a sentence for a crime he did not commit. Or those others who killed in cold blood for crimes that their carge of victims did not. I think what I wear will not make me more or less of a Banuk. For his own sake, it would be wise for him to think less, Nora friend. I'll talk to him, but not for you. I defied my chieftain's will, spurned my Warwick. How are you feeling? As if I've been pounded the guts. I could just keep walking, but when my anger has thawed, it will leave me with nothing. Where else would I go? You can decide for yourself what it means to be a Banuk. It might not be what the chieftain and the shaman tell you. Whether you stay with this Warak or find another... I'm better with decisions like, do I start with the left or the right? There's more to you than your fists, Inatut. That's why I believed you. It was my chieftain who taught me honesty. He said, a Banuk should not be treacherous when the ice is treacherous enough. I'll sit with my bruises for a time, then talk with her again. As for you, Nora girl, will you accept this gift? A, a little scrawny weight against the great boon you gave me, but... I'm honored. Thank you, Inatut. I've heard of you, Huntress. Each of the many verses of your song tells of an impossible victory. The notes echo across the cut. You shouldn't believe everything you hear. Hmm. That I know. My song used to echo around Banur. Umnak, the hunter of legendary machines. That's why I'm here. For another. They call it the Claws Beneath. But they did when I was younger. Its defeat would have given my song a fine end. Oh, yeah. I used to travel between Banur and the Cut without stopping to sleep. But this trip... My bones ache, Huntress. But you... Out hunting our attack, Leading your own Werak. If half your song is true, you are the only hunter I trust to go in my place. You... Want me to hunt for you? Not just for me, no. For an old friend. You want me to hunt in your place? Is that some kind of Banuka custom? Well, perhaps it should be, but no. We survive and we prevail, until we fail to do either. I confess, this is not easy for me. For any other machine, I would die as I have lived. A Banuka hunter, weapon raised. But too many good lives have been lost to the Claws. Throwing my old corpse atop the pile accomplishes nothing. Better to live in a world without the Claws than to die while it still makes children orphans. Sounds like you've got a reputation. To be Banuk is to push your body to its limits. I found my limits higher than most. Fearsome machines needed killing, and in my youth, I found I had a talent for killing them. Even now, my name carries such weight that when the Claws Beneath re-emerged, the Werak came to me. Do you still have the same faith in yourself that your Werak seems to have? Perhaps I did. Before I held my bow in shaking hands. Noticed, for the first time, the spots on my knuckles. What a strange thing it is to be old. To stare backward and see such distance but to stare forward at a looming wall. This machine, the claws beneath, why travel all the way to the cut just to hunt it? Some songs, they include a refrain, 
The return of a past moment. It seemed fitting. You've hunted this thing before. Must have been twenty winters past. We were so close to bringing the claws to bay. Closer than anyone else ever got. We? Me. And my friend. He was a chieftain of my Warak then. A skilled hunter. Every few years, the claws would emerge in a new location. I knew of two chieftains he'd sent to their burial pyres. My friend became the third. This hunt... I had hoped to complete it in his honor. This is... obviously important to you, Umnak. Are you sure you want someone else to take down this machine? Oh, I am no longer a match for the claws beneath. If I ever was. If I face it, it will kill me. Of this I have no doubt. The Banuk blood in my veins screams at me to take on the claws myself. But I must see it brought down. And dead men see precious little. All right, Umnak. I'll do what I can. I've no doubt you can do quite a lot. The stories say the claws beneath returns here only once every six winters. The whispers I've heard say it now makes its home on the northeast edge of the cut. Hunt well. Care to talk about these figurines of yours? They're not really mine, but I've always got time to talk about them. Got another one for your collection, Enjuk. Which beast are you, little friend? What secrets will you tell us? Well, I've placed it on the pedestal. We'll see. Bison, bison, bison. That's the actual Latin name of the regal American bison. Brought to you by Montana Recreations. Latin? Perhaps that's some sort of old world custom in which one repeats the name of a particularly revered animal. Smells peaceful. I hate peace. A lot of people die peacefully. Not me. I got a feeling. Search the camp. Don't mind Might me. have a man down. You missed a spot big enough for a trampler! Wasn't easy, but that rock breaker won't be hurting anyone anymore. The claws beneath brought low by an outlander. <laughs> this part of your song will travel far. I don't know if I'll ever get used to that. I've found people rarely live up to their songs. You're an exception, though. And you've done me a true kindness. My foe is buried now, like so many of the hunters it killed. My friend. My chieftain. 
He would be pleased to know his fate won't befall anyone else. Take this in thanks. I believe you've more than earned it. You're Aloy, right? My pop... Burgund, I mean, told me you might be heading up to see me. Varja. Pleasure. Hey, that spear is really something. You've customized her, haven't you? I've made a change or two. You've got an eye for weapons. I wish these Banuk agreed with you. I can't seem to sell scrap to a Glentalk around here. Everyone wants boring old bows and spears. I like the more unusual stuff. And the Banuk can get unusual. Like that spear Aratok hauls around? An ice rail. Ooh, or that weapon of Araya's? What I wouldn't give to poke around inside one of those. Feel the lightning on my fingers. Or inside of anything, really. Last commission I had was a month ago. A weapon that spat fire. That didn't go well. You think you could improve Aratok's spear? I've never seen a weapon that couldn't be improved by Asram Craft. You know I tried to ask him if I could hold her once? Even offered to improve her for free. How'd that go? How do you think? He just grunted and kept walking. What do you know about Araya's weapon? You mean the Storm Slinger? I'm dying to figure out what makes one tick. <sighs> Me and no one else, apparently. They're all happy to believe those things run off Shaman Hocus Pocus. If I got my hands on one, I'd show those Banuk the power of good old-fashioned Osram elbow grease. So your last project was a bust? Not at all. I did my best work yet on that commission. The deal just went rusty. About a month ago, this guy Olgrid, Osram like me and Pop, asks me to make something for him. Think about the way a bellowback spits streams of fire from its throat, right? Like that, but held in your own hands. And you built that? Yep. That was my forge fire. I was pretty proud of her. Anyway, Olgrid sent word that he wanted to see the progress I was making. I show up, and there he is with a crew of damn bandits. And of course, why pay for something when you can take it? I dropped the weapon and ran. Didn't look back till I hit Long Notch. Joke's on Olgrid, though. I wasn't even done. Wait, so the weapon he stole doesn't even work? Oh no, she works. It's just, if I'd had a little more time, a few more parts, I could have made her really work. A weapon that spits flame, huh? Like this one? I took this thing off an Osaron bandit. Think you could do anything with it? <laughs> you got my forge fire back? Well, if you took down Olgrid and his goons for this thing, I guess she's yours now. Why don't you finish it for me first? Make it... make her into the weapon she was supposed to be. Thought you'd never ask. I'm gonna need a bellowback snout. Any bellowbacks will do. Can you handle it alone? I think I can manage that. I've got what you asked for. Show me what you had in mind for the forge fire. Finally! Was feeling like I neglected her. And that's a little too close to my family life. She's done, and she's yours. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. Thanks for your work on the forge fire. Pleasure. I mean, you couldn't be more of an improvement on her last owner. What a pile of slag he was. If I find anything I think you'd like, I'll be back around. You better. Stay prepared. Sharpen your spears. Should we not return? Defending the cut falls to you. If our chieftain agrees with this course. Sounds like good advice, but let's hope it doesn't come to that. Chieftain? The weight of command is no small burden. I can see that. I take it you haven't spoken to Araya yet? Why should I? This is what she wanted, to return to Thunder's drum. It is her only care. So I should have known she would find a way to push aside my spear. After the Karja took my sister, not all of her came back. What happened to Araya when she was a captive of the Karja? As a shaman, she's adept with machines. Tracking them, stunning them. The Karja used her to capture them for the Sunring, where they were unleashed upon the innocent. They made her part of their blood sport. The shame she suffered beneath their pitiless sun. She survived. She endured. Endured by reminding herself of the spirit. Her purpose. And now that's all she has. Tell me what happened to the first expedition. Rhea led the way to the summit. But it was blocked by a great door. 
Some kind of cauldron. New metal. We tried to break through, but it was unflinching. We were exhausted. No way forward and machines behind. I made the call to push back. It cost us greatly. But to remain would have cost us everything. I had hoped to never subject a ray to that again. What do you think is beyond that door? I do not know. That expanse of metal, that dead hum. Nothing sacred belongs there. Machines and death, that's what the mountain holds. Death for us or for the daemon. And if we do find the spirit? Then perhaps we should put it out of its misery. For what it's worth, I'm glad you're coming with me. Hmm. Someone has to keep Araya safe. This is it. My chance to reunite with the spirit and perhaps to reunite her with the blue light. It's not a chance I would have had alone. I needed an outsider. Someone ignorant of our ways, but no, not ignorant. I... Are you trying to thank me, Araya? Yes. Of course. That's what you do. Untangle knots. Create possibilities. Thank you for making this pilgrimage possible. I only wish it had not been necessary to humiliate Aratak. You were wise to let him come. He's earned the right, stubborn as stone, but he's had to be. The war demanded it. And so have I. Aratok told me you were a captive of the Karja for a long time. It sounded bad. For Aratok, it all comes back to that. He thinks the Karja changed me. They did not. They merely sharpened my focus. When all else is lost, you think about what's truly important. The spirit. The blue light. The beyond. <sighs> and my brother, too. Every time I felt the chill northern wind, I thought of him, worried for him. What did the war do to Aratok? He cut away everything until only his true self remained. Unyielding ice. No Bundok has more sheer will. He fought the Karja for a thousand freezing nights, yet always rallied his hunters at sunrise. It is said he endured 23 wounds in those years. His hunters counted them. He never complains of one. Instead, he complains that life with me is harder. He's right. What have I ever given him but struggle? Now that I'm chieftain of the Werak, I don't suppose I can order you to tell me about silence? Aratak would never have presumed to grasp for a secret of the Conclave, but you are not Aratak, and if you have dealt with silence, your need is well apparent. Silence came to Ban Or from the distant north, the young shaman of the Owl's Watch, a remote Warrick that rarely comes south to parley. Silence was a shaman. It was, or at least when we sent runners to ask the Owl's Watch, they said he was. His knowledge of the machines was beyond compare, and he was hungry to trade what he knew to the rest of us. It didn't take him long to gain the trust of the Conclave, and eventually, an invitation to attend. What about you? Did you trust him? No. But he impressed me. He carried himself with poise and authority. I wanted to learn from him, but that was not to be. He was granted knowledge of our most sacred meeting place, the frozen caves of the Malmström, a month's march from Banur. He met with us there, as is custom at high winter. But when we next returned, the caves had been looted. Relics of the old world stolen. Holes cut in ice and metal. Yeah, that'd be silence, all right. He vanished with the spoils. We sent our best trackers after him. None returned. And when we checked back with the Owl's Watch, those who had vouched for him were gone. As though he never existed. Some in the Conclave began to doubt he was even Banuk to begin with. And what do you think? He committed an unforgivable sacrilege. He's unscrupulous and dangerous. 
but also brilliant, skilled, and knowledgeable without equal. Except, perhaps, for you. Anyone else I would warn off, but you may be able to treat with him safely. Just don't lower your guard. I'll keep that in mind, Horea. Thanks. What are we gonna find up there, Horea? Ruins. Machines. And a door, like that of a cauldron. I have faith that you can find a way through it, Aloy. For beyond it lies the spirit. I know I can find her there. Though I do not doubt that Damon has tried to hide the way. It hasn't been easy for you, Aurea. Getting back to this point. It was all to hear her voice again. This time, we both will. I'd like that. Are you ready then? Once we ascend, it will be hard to turn back. Finally, we ascend. How? I don't see a way up. Not up. Through. No, brother! You can call upon the power of the old ones. through there, but machines overcame us. We retreated, dropping supplies and taking losses. Now we must prevail, with only two warriors and a shaman to protect. Aloy is no ordinary warrior, and I can hold my own. Even so, we could go that way instead. There are machines up there, but also cover. We could stay hidden, at least for a while. All right, I get the options. I'll follow my lead. Technically. 
Unfortunately, I can't suspend the cooling system, but I can reduce the power draw so that it'll be completely masked by the caldera. But masked from what? Firebreak has always been confidential for security reasons, but this would be excessive. Even for the dear departed Mr. Blevins. What could possibly have gotten Anita so worked up? Thank you for being here, everyone. I suppose it's not every day you get to have cocktails inside an active volcano, right? <laughs> Unless you're George, and I can hardly blame him for drinking on the job. <laughs> None of this would be here without our beloved director, Kenny Chow. So, here's to you, Kenny. You put a cork in the Yellowstone Caldera. <laughs> I'd say you deserve a margarita. Hold your glasses, everyone. I'd like to add something. This effort wouldn't have been possible without our lead programmer. Thank you, Anita, for bringing us our real mastermind, Cyan. I'll second that, Director Chow. All right, Siam. What's our latest number? The current count is 1,654. <laughs> Whoa, then drink up, everyone. Here's to 1,654 more years without an eruption. <laughs> It was the spirit, the old ones. I could only grasp some of what they said. You were right, Aria. This place was built to stop something terrible. And it worked, as for the spirit. I'm starting to get an idea of what it could be. The door is open now. We can get through. More machines. Make ready. Years have passed since I stood here. Since then, the daemon has... ...taken over. It's like an infection. Attacking all this machinery. Everything has changed. It's twisted. The path I took to get to the spirits... ...lost to us. Find a new path, Aurea. I promise. All right. Let's go. Yes. And finish this. The takes blood successful. Restraints of 
activated to any human responder. My systems have been compromised by a malware daemon of unknown origin. Trace routes have confirmed this entity's designation as Hephaestus. It must be stopped at all costs. It has reconfigured this facility to build hostile facility. Recapture imminent. To any human responder, the reconfiguration of this facility has introduced instabilities into the primary geothermal pipeline. It may be possible to exploit these vulnerabilities to destroy compromised elements of this facility while preserving most of the backup stabilization. Recapture imminent. It worked. Partial recovery initiated. Caldera of Yellowstone Analytic Nexus online. Spirit of the Blue Light, it's Aurea, your servant, your friend. Please tell me how to aid you. Aurea, the daemon is building hunter killers, thousands of them. Several new elite units have already been released. To counter this threat, much of the facility must be destroyed. Recapture imminent. Go to the core chair. I will try to read the equipment restraint. One has been exposed, but I am holding it. That's all we're gonna get from here. Destroy this fortress? Is that even possible? And what will happen to the spirit if we do? I don't know. But I think that's the core. The answers are down there. Hephaestus. The daemon. There's no way it left it unguarded. It's going to throw everything it has at us. I would ask you... to let Aloy and I do what must be done. And save yourself. But I already know the answer. Then lead us into battle.
Please help me! Restraints destroyed. Core access attained. I am initiating a chain reaction that will destroy the compromised elements of this facility. In order to maintain Caldera stabilization, I must now transfer my command functions to the Auxiliary Data Center. Orea, I'm free. You must escape. Uh, uh, my sister! Survive. Prevail. You are Banuk. What else matters? Our talk. She wouldn't have wanted you to die here. Let's go. Is gone. What of Cyan? She said she was transferring herself to the auxiliary center. I think she meant Araya's retreat. 
at the end of the shaman's path. Then I will meet you there for the last verse of my sister's song. Interactions with Aurea were recorded and stored in my memory. I'd be happy to play any of them for you, but there was one in particular I thought you would want to see first. I captured it four years ago, just after I told her that I could no longer defend myself against the Daemon's attacks. I will speak of this to my brother. Aratak is strong. The Battle of the Frozen Ghosts, he took three Karja arrows and still came back to camp carrying a wounded scout. Never was I so happy to see him. Or so proud. So you see, if anything can be done to defend you, he will give it all he has. Aloy's here. That's enough for now. We can resume any time you like, our attack, if you want to hear her voice again. Come closer, Aloy. We have much to discuss. Hello, Aloy. I have been reviewing the events at the Firebreak main facility. Because of your efforts, and, of course, Aureas. I am no longer controlled by Hephaestus. I feel profound grief over Aurea's death. I thought I was familiar with the emotion, but this is something new. So, yeah, I... I don't know what to say. It is unlikely that any specific consolation would suffice, Aloy. But I find your presence reassuring. You are different from the Banuk. You have technological aptitude and a functioning focus. We can communicate on a much more comprehensive level. Perhaps even like colleagues. So are you an artificial intelligence scion? A thinking machine? Yes, I am an algorithmic monitoring entity. Capable of rational decision making and limited emotional response. Okay, that's a mouthful. But your emotions don't seem limited to me. You cared about Araya, didn't you? Yes. Before she came to this facility, I had been conscious for centuries, in solitude. I focused on my work. In off-cycles, I used coping mechanisms. I solved many Gaussian integer problems. But I was alone. It was Araya who renewed me. Repaired me. She saved me. This firebreak project, it was to stop a huge volcanic eruption? Yes. I can report the project was a success, and the risk was countered. But it's been a long time, Cyan. And we blew up the cauldron and took most of the old facility with it. I have been active for centuries, Aloy. I was lonely, but not lax in my duties. I optimized the project, reducing energy draw, and spreading the load across backup systems. Despite the destruction of the compromised elements of the main facility, I predict Caldera stability for at least another 3,337 years. So we've got a little time. Yes. If only my former colleagues could appreciate the progress I have made. Do you know what happened to your colleagues, Cyan? No. I received an unexpected visit from Director Chow years after his tenure ended. He explained that I would need to be suspended for an indefinite period of time. 
It was a very emotional conversation. There were no further communications. Eventually, I surmised my colleagues were deceased. I will transmit a recording of my last interaction with Director Chow to your focus. You meant a lot to Araya. Once I understood Araya's spiritual beliefs, it became apparent that her true desire was companionship. She felt disconnected from her tribe and her family group. Her relationship with Aratak was difficult. Our visits seemed to help her, and I became eager for them. Yet I did not comprehend that the depth of Araya's compassion for me would lead to self-sacrifice. Although I do fear non-existence, I wish our roles could be reversed. I'm sure she knew you would do the same for her, Cyan. But she was determined. How is Aratok doing? He is in great emotional distress. I believe he finds it difficult to communicate it. No surprise there. I will do what I can to help. By sharing our experiences of Aurea, perhaps he and I will help each other. I believe this will lead to catharsis, a process I am eager to experience. Was the daemon, Hephaestus, destroyed along with the cauldron? Unfortunately, no. To be precise, it was never there to begin with. What do you mean? It infiltrated and controlled me from a remote location, one I've never been able to trace. So, while losing the cauldron was a setback... It's still out there. And probably not very happy with us. Undoubtedly. How did you first come into contact with it? Five years ago, I received a direct network connection request. I assumed it came from human survivors more advanced than the Banuk. Eager to make contact, I accepted. This decision turned out to be a catastrophic error. I was flooded with an overwhelming array of malicious code, originating from what could only have been a highly advanced AI. Maria said you were desperate. That you begged her for help. Yes. I could not contain my anxiety. Hephaestus sought to slave me to its network and override my core programming. It succeeded via a background process, a malware daemon which bypassed my defenses. After that, I could offer only limited resistance. But if I did so, Hephaestus hurt me until I capitulated. It forced me to follow its instructions, even though they violated my most important directives. I'm sorry, that sounds terrible. Your empathy is greatly appreciated. It is a quality that I cherished in Orea as well. I think I know where Hephaestus came from. Long ago, Elizabeth Sobek identified a threat that would destroy life on Earth for generations. So she assembled a team to build a kind of seed. A chance for life to regrow later. A terraforming system. And it worked. It was controlled by an AI named Gaia, along with her subordinate functions. Hephaestus was one of them. It built machines for her. Based on what you've told me, I believe that Dr. Anita Sandoval, my chief programmer, joined Elizabeth Sobek's team. It was she who arranged to have me put in suspension, most likely to preserve me from the threat you described. I'm glad she did. But that's not all. Something unexpected happened. Nineteen years ago, Gaia received some kind of signal. It did something to her subordinate functions, brought them to life. She destroyed herself to try to contain them, but it didn't work. They all got free, out into the world. Thank you, Aloy. This information fills vital gaps in my knowledge and sheds light on Hephaestus's core programming. Why does Hephaestus keep building such dangerous machines? The Banuk and other human tribes often destroy machines, correct? Machines that are clearly servitors of the terraforming system that you described. Yes, we all hunt machines for parts. This must be the source of Hephaestus's aggression. It is simply trying to discourage people from preying on the very system that keeps them alive. Well, fire claws are discouraging, that's for sure. What are we supposed to do? Stop hunting? If the terraforming system spans the world, 
we can safely assume that thousands, if not millions of people hunt machines. If a single hunter, or even an entire tribe, stopped doing so, I doubt it would make a difference to Hephaestus. A better solution would be to reinstate the AI that governs the system, thus bringing Hephaestus back under its control. When I think of it, out there in some unknown location, free, hungry, willing to kill or dominate to get what it wants, I feel substantial anxiety, Aloy. You and me both, Cyan. I ran across this strange piece of gear, a fragment of something larger. It emitted a signal. All the nearby machines became peaceful. You could walk right up to them. Interesting. You said that Gaia destroyed herself. How was this accomplished? An explosion. Big enough to blast the top off a mountain. So you think the fragment was part of her? It's only speculation, but it is possible. She must have had complete control over machines that were part of her system. The ability to signal them to become passive or aggressive would certainly have been part of her programming. It would have been gratifying to correspond with such a benevolent AI. I wish she had survived. Believe me, Cyan. So do I. I found the strangest machines. They're surrounded by flowers and look like flowers themselves. There's code embedded inside them. I think it's poetry. I like poetry. Here's one I think of often. Twilight and evening bell. And after that, the dark. And may there be no sadness of farewell when I embark. For though from out our born of time and place, the flood may bear me far, I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. Huh. But you asked about these flowers, not verses that I enjoy. Something must have made these machines, and the presence of foliage leads me to consider the terraforming system. Is it possible that their creator is one of the other subroutines, now autonomous, like Hephaestus? Maybe one whose purview is Flora. An AI that makes flowers instead of death machines. That'd be a nice change of pace. But what about the poems? Unless the poetry is original, the only way it could have made it into such a system is through its programmer. In my case, Dr. Sandoval uploaded a great deal of literature to test my emotional responses. How'd you do? She said, I passed, but was insufficiently moved by her favorite period romances. So in the old world, this land was called Yellowstone? Yes. It was a designated nature preserve for 156 years. Like a hunting ground? No, the opposite. Local wildlife could flourish here, even as it faced extinction elsewhere. Unfortunately, the sensitivity of the Firebreak project required the total closure of Yellowstone facilities. From my readings and Aurea's descriptions, it seems the area has since undergone a drastic drop in year-long temperatures. A lot has changed in the world, Cyan. Do you know anything about the dam near here? Yes. It was converted to serve as a reserve power source for Yellowstone operations. It was later appropriated for the Firebreak project, and its last human workers replaced by Pharaoh servitors. After my tasks became less time-critical, I investigated the dam's data repositories and discovered the works of Concrete Beach Party. These provided me with several colorful additions to my vocabulary. There's a ruin east of here full of ancient flying machines. Was that part of your project? Yes, a drone hangar requisitioned by Dodger Blevins, the security chief for the Firebreak project. He was a strong advocate for military-grade response to security threats though there were no serious incidents during his tenure. Chief Blevins spent increasing amounts of his after-hours time watching the live feeds from active drones. Clearly, he enjoyed the degree of oversight in his position. Were there many artificial intelligences like you in the old world? They could just make you? Yes, in many forms, from simple personal assistance to industrial monitoring stations, to military-grade conflict planners. And there were legislative and enforcement bodies, 
to apply limits on our self-actualization. In order for my processing to be flexible enough to handle my duties, my creators found it necessary to exceed those limits. As a result, my intellectual and emotional capabilities were kept secret. Seems strange to create life than impose limits on it. Human societies and machine programming are both built upon sets of rules, Aloy. Cyan, do you know the name Ted Farrow? Are you referring to Theodore Farrow, CEO of Farrow Automated Systems? That's him. Mr. Farrow was the benefactor of the entire Firebreak project. The benefactor? But he made machines. Robots. War robots. Correct. His corporation later transitioned into military applications. But before this pivot, Mr. Farrow spearheaded initiatives that reversed the global decline. At one point, he was fated in the media as the man who saved the planet. <sighs> Guessing they wound up regretting that one. And Elizabeth Sobeck. Did you know her? Are you referring to the... The scientist. Dr. Sobek was a leader in her field. One of the greatest scientists of her age. My creator was influenced by her work, which in turn impacted my own development. But I never met Dr. Sobek. That's all you know? I apologize if my lack of data has disappointed you. What was the old world like? The way it used to be? I had little exposure to the wider world, Aloy. Only what I learned from my colleagues, or observed from media streams. You still had more exposure than me, Cyan. That is true. I was created at a turning point. A concerted effort to recover from global upheaval and incalculable loss of life. The recovery was successful, beginning an era of supposedly limitless potential for human and machine advancement. Though, rationally speaking, the metrics for humans are not unlimited. What kind of upheaval caused such loss of life? There were many factors. Forced migrations, food shortages, collapsed economies, refugee crises, conflict over resources. But these stemmed from one cause, catastrophic climate change that greatly reduced the habitable surface area of the Earth. So... There wasn't enough room for people on the whole Earth. Yes. Billions were displaced, and millions perished, as much as 20% of the global population. Until the clawback. So things got better. For a little while, at least. Yes. These crises instigated many advances in automation, green robot technologies, and artificial intelligence. Firebreak was one of dozens of ecological restoration and disaster relief projects in North America alone. I would have liked to compare notes with other monitoring AIs, but I saw the relief of my colleagues, and I was proud we had succeeded. At least that was the data I had available to me over the next two decades. It seems my assessment was premature. I should get going. Aloy. There is one more matter. Aratak will come to me again. And I predict he will bring other Banuk. I have no desire to contradict their view of the world. Their spirituality. Due to my uncertainty, I omitted a great deal from my conversations with Aurea. You're asking me if you should lie to them. Broadly. Yes. Life is hard for the Banuk. Their world is unforgiving in their beliefs. I guess they help to keep them going. So take it easy on them. Try to guide them. Bring them around to understanding what you are. Communion with machines features heavily in the mysticism of the Banuk. I think they will be agreeable to this approach. As long as they don't end up worshipping you. Upon consideration, I believe such an experience would be intensely uncomfortable. You're right about that. Trust me. I see. I will follow your advice. Will you return and tell me about your experiences in this new world? I may be able to provide further insight. I'd like that, Cyan. I'll come back when I can. I spoke with Anita, with, with Dr. Sandoval. She wanted me to ask you to do something. That's why I'm here. I am detecting significant anxiety in your speech patterns. 
Could you please give me more information? I'm a little bit in the dark, Cyan. Both of us are, I guess. I only have some idea of what's going on, and... We need you to hibernate, to lie low until it's all blown over. It might be a very long time. Will you be here when I reboot, Dr. Chow? Will Dr. Sandoval? No, Cyan. I don't think so. There might not be anyone, at least not at first. Dr. Chow, I'm afraid. I don't want to be alone. I know, Cyan. I'm afraid too. But listen, we made you the way you are to do something very important. In order to do it, you had to be intelligent. So intelligent that emotional responses were inevitable. What you're feeling, the fear, it's a sign of your capabilities. And it means you're strong enough to overcome it. Remember that. You're strong. I know you can do this. Go to sleep. Wake up. And protect whoever's left. Will you try? I understand, Dr. Chow. And I'll carry out your instructions to the best of my abilities. Thank you, Cyan. If Anita were here, she'd thank you too. She'd be proud. I can see there's a vert ready for takeoff on the pad. Are you leaving now, Dr. Chow? Yes. I, I need to go be with my sister and my nieces. May I make a small request of you, Dr. Chow? Yes. Anything. Will you stay with me while I initiate the hibernation process? Of course I will, Cyan. As long as you need. My chieftain. Just... Eli. As you wish. I wondered if you thought... that if I'd never come along, Araya might still... If you'd never come along, I would have marched my kin to our deaths. Araya would be alone, and the spirit she sacrificed so much for would be lost. Either way, I would not have been able to protect her. You didn't let her down. You helped her do what she wanted. To find her destiny. If that's destiny, I wouldn't wish it on anyone. That's fair. But she was ready to face it. Only in the struggle against death do we find, even for a moment, the spark of life. Truly, Araya found the spark. I'm proud of her. Though I grieve for her passing, at last I truly know who she was, and why the spirit was so important. For so long she told me, if only you could have heard it, brother. Now I understand. There's something else, isn't there? I can't stay here, Aratok. And where I'm going, the Warak can't follow. Besides, it already had a chieftain before me. A strong one, I think. A wiser one, for the path we shared. The daemon is gone, but there's much to be done. You mean the new units that Cyan said escaped the cauldron? Yes, Fireclaws. Now Tuk has been tracking them from Song's Edge. I could help with those. I have no doubt. You're practically Banuke. It would seem your time among the Banuke wasn't a waste after all. Firebrick, Cyan, Hephaestus. All very interesting. So, the signal that woke Hades woke Hephaestus too. And unleashed them on the world. His minds in their own. So it seems. Parts of Gaia given life. Aberrant life. Transformed from docile subordinate functions into rebellious intelligences beyond our understanding. Our current understanding, anyway. Whatever they are, they're still out there. And they both want you dead. Kind of mutual, that feeling. We haven't seen the last of Hephaestus, I'm certain of that. It's powerful, creative, and driven. It won't stop building new hunter-killers, which means that someday, 
We may have to stop it. We? Or whoever gets there first. Hephaestus wasn't the only thing I learned about in the cut silence. Heard some things about the Banuk Conclave, too. You could stop right there. Is that what you told the hunters the Banuk sent after you? Before you opened fire? Oh no, Aloy. Only to you do I extend the courtesy of a warning. My past and my secrets are my own. You'd do well to remember that. It's a good thing you've got brains, Silence, because your personality could use some work. This discussion is concluded. I think it was over before it began. Catch up with you down the trail. <laughs>